I gave him like the thousand dollars to surprise them. He says how much they need it. He's like, because look at this. And then he opens his trunk. They're living in their car. I had no clue who they were or their story before. I essentially want to like, I guess, brand myself as Mr. Beast, but more wholesome. Within like 20 minutes, we raised like eight or nine grand. Four or five days, it was like 230 or 240 US. 84 men a week take their life. 75% of suicides are male. That was my lowest. It was like middle of the night, like 1130. I just sat there a little wet ground because it was just raining, crying, I started crying and just feeling like really no one to turn to and like, I don't want to know what I want to do with my life. Welcome back to the MBH podcast. Money buys happiness, guys. Thank you so much. We passed 100K. Thank God. Finally. Thank God for that one. Appreciate um, you all. Yeah, for real. You guys have been showing us a ton of love and we love you back. Yep. So if you are here today and you were not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, like this video, leave a comment, let us know what you thought. We're easy. We take any comments. No? Easy. Yeah. Easy. Where are we? Where are we right now and who are we with? Bro? We're in Indianapolis right now for VCon. Yes. We're with my boy, Zach, aka MD Motivator. Yes. My sir. guy. Boys, thank you for having me back. This of is course. Round two, right? Yeah. So if you're watching this, if you're a newcomer to, to MBH, we actually had Zach on about 10 months ago. But I feel like so much has changed mm -hmm. since then. Um and if you want like a, a, a back story for him and some context, go watch that episode. It's super motivating, super inspirational. You're going to be moved, that's for sure, because we were. Yes, sir. Uh, I think a lot of people were. So happy to have you back. Thanks for having me back. Saw boys. you were going to be here. We're like, okay, let's do it. Let's yeah, do this, Let's man. do another one, right? Yes, sir. Um, your growth has been insane. I mean, I have your numbers here. My man's got the 3.2 million <laughs> IG. 16 million on TikTok. Oh. <laughs> like, Ooh, 16, crazy. that's one six. Um, and on YouTube, 5.8 million subscribers, which is like the hardest platform to grow on. So congratulations on that. I don't know what your numbers were before, but... I have a feeling that it's gone up a bit, maybe three, four times that, right? Yeah, it's gone up quite a bit. Wow. I, I think I remember when we had you, IG, you were like 1.6, something, something like, like that. that. And we can like, I think we go back to the episode where yeah. we said it. It's got, uh, I think over ha a mil and a half on Instagram, two mil on, t uh, two mil on YouTube, 10 mil on TikTok. Jeez. Dude, and, when I, and when I first met Ernesto on social media, I had zero on YouTube. I had maybe like 500,000 on TikTok. That was when I was like depressed in medical crazy. school when we first connected. I remember seeing your videos, and man. Like and I was back like, back and forth a little bit. Crazy. On stuff, I was just like, yo, I fuck with what you're doing. Now, two or three years later, look at you guys. I'm like, what Appreciate we're doing. That. So just wow. thank you guys. So now we're in Indianapolis. Um, we're at VCon. What shout are your Gary thoughts v. on yeah? Shout out Gary V. What are your thoughts on 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 VCon and and what's what Gary V has mm. built? Because I know you're all about impact and influence yep. and how many Passion people you can, and empathy, of course, and connection right? Connection and family and love and kindness. I think is beautiful, and right? Like, and and what he's doing here and the amount of people that come out, mm -hmm. right? This is not a music artist. This is not an athlete. Yep. This is an entrepreneur. I think it's beautiful whenever you get hundreds or thousands of people in the same room with the same values, the same yes. mindsets, the same ethos, like the same mission. Yeah. And it's rare to see that. And it's kind of like intimidating because like you're not used to that in society. But when you get around that, it's we felt that it levels too. you up. Yeah, we felt that being there. We felt just like even us doing the street interviews. Yeah. You could go up to anyone. They're all open to talking. Um, very similar mindsets. Very nice. Mm hmm open to networking like this the networking here is insane mm -hmm. people just coming up to you you're going up to people everyone's down and you never know like their story or, or who you don't they know, know who they are yeah they what they are they're just like a regular casual joe you, of you, course you know what i found pretty cool like and i noticed it with you because i seen you walking around yesterday at the lucas oil stadium dude you had so many people coming up to you and the craziest thing is like as long as you were wearing merch and you had saying i'm md motivator <laughs> yeah. like People know you from your face. Like, yeah. how does that feel? It's crazy, man. Because it's it's not just know me from the face. They'll come up to me and they will. It's like they're like, I was going through a really difficult time, and your videos like saved me or helped me in my life when I was depressed or I lost my job, and just like meaningful, purposeful, like substance. Yes. And and that never gets old or like, oh my god, thank you so much. It's like, thank like, thank you. Like, I'm, well, so, I'm so happy you're doing better. Uh -huh. It's like but what it's, you're doing, right? It doesn't get old. No, man. The, what you're doing with your with your career and with your life. Yeah. That's not getting old. Thank you. It yeah. can't. No, right? it's, it's evolving though, and it's beautiful to yeah. be a part of it. And, and we saw you with your parents too. Yeah, right. right? So that my, was cool. So my dad's been a big fan of Gary Vee for like three to five years. Nice. <laughs> so when I said like VCon and Gary, like they reached out to have us come to Indianapolis, I was like the first person I thought. I'm like, <laughs> call my dad. Yeah, yeah. he's coming. Yeah. So then, obviously, then to spend time with my dad and my mom this weekend is beautiful because I don't spend much time with them as well. How has that been? 
for your parents to see, I guess now maybe in person. Oh, kind of like the interaction. Yeah. 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 It's cool because they're like just so proud. I'm just like, this is mom, this is dad. When like someone will come up to me and they're like, and they just like say how great like the content is and how thankful they are. And just to see it is different. Yeah. Because they don't usually around me day to day, but it's beautiful, man. Yeah. yeah. And I want to talk about even like the, the giving back that you've done because I know when we sure. spoke about the, on the first episode, you're like, right now it's it's money, but then it's going to be flight tickets. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. You actually manifestation yes, ma- manifested it all right so um in terms of giving back do you like do you know how much in terms of money you've given back like a total amount uh, i don't know the total amount but i know in the last three months it's a little shy of a million it's like nine hundred thousand bucks wow. unbelievable we did one in la for this uh with the lakers with this, yeah. this dad and son that's the story i want to hear about i want to sure. hear about that story like from from the start yeah so plug the video in you want to buy my mystery crown for a buck yeah I got two of them. I ain't got no money, bro. No buck? We, we doing bad right now, bro. What's your name? Donald. I'm Zachary. What's your name, man? Joseph. Joseph, you like basketball? Yeah. Is that your favorite sport? Yeah. Crowns for you, man. What'd you say? Thank you. You want the basketball, too? Yeah. We have, uh, we have autism. Oh, yeah, autism. Yeah. Since you guys were out here today, yeah. I got a thousand cash. <laughs> How you playing, man? A thousand bucks. For, uh, for you. Sure. A thousand cash. <laughs> Come over here, man. Love you, bro. Man, I need the cash. You want me to tell you why? Sure. Look at my car. What's going on with your car? Holy cow, you guys are living in here right now? Yeah, we're doing us right now. What's your dream? My dream is for him. Get everything he needs, help wise, and get us into our own apartment, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Come on, bro. I right, thank you, big dog. I appreciate it. No problem. I got another surprise though for you. You guys ever been to a Laker game before? No, we never. You're going to the Laker game tonight. We're gonna meet all the players. Oh man. <laughs> and we're pulling up in a Lambo. <laughs> How's that sound to you, man? Hey. Let's go, Lakers! How you doing, man? So homeless dad son. So I'm in LA. I'm connected with the Lakers assistant coach. His name's Phil Handy. Okay. Shout out Phil Handy because without him, none of this is possible. Okay. He's like, I got four tickets. I get you pregame access. I meet some of the players. Go find like the deserving kid or story. Yeah. So I'm going around LA. We're going to Watts. We're going to Compton. We're going all to like all these like suburbs in LA. Of if you've been to these areas, some of them are a little more dangerous than others. Yeah. And I'm in Compton, and I'm in outside this barber shop, and I see like the back and alleyway this dad sitting in like this giant suv and like the front side doors open for like the passenger seat and then the back passenger seat and i see a dad sitting there and then i see like an eight or nine year old son sitting there i'm like are they going into the barber shop are they like chilling like did they leave in and they were just staying there so i'm like okay i'm gonna go for it so i asked him like would you want to buy my mystery half for a buck and he's like we're down really bad right now his name's donald and his son's named joseph and then i'm like would you like the hat to the kid, he's like, yeah. I'm like, do you like basketball? He's like, yeah. I'm like, do you like LeBron? He's like, yeah. And all he kept saying was, yeah. And I'm like, this is kind of weird. Like, the kid's yeah. like, I would expect him to be a little more hype. Of course. Long story short, I find out he's nonverbal autistic. Wow. The dad shared. And then after I gave him, like, the $1,000 to surprise them, he says how much they need it. He's like, because look at this. And then he opens his trunk, and you see the mattress with, like, the three or four oh pillows. And I found they're, they're living in their car. I had wow. no clue who they were or their story before. And I was like, wow. And they're just like blown away. So then, long story short, we create this beautiful experience. Take them on a Lambo, yeah. bring them <laughs> to the game. Um, f- funny fact, though, the kid didn't even want to go in the Lambo no. because he felt much safer in the SUV with his dad because that's yeah. all he's known. He's never had his what own bed. Used to. Yeah. He never had an. Ap- he's never had his own bed. They've never rarely have an apartment. Um, long Getting story goosebumps short, right now, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Long story short, coach, players, courtside. Kids wearing all these like 2000, 2004 championship rings. <laughs> nice. like, he's all bedazzled out. Yeah. Post the video. Within like 20 minutes, we raised like eight or nine grand. Within like an hour, it was like 25 grand. Long story short, within like four or five days, it was like 230 or 240 US. <sighs> Unbelievable. Quarter of a million dollars. Wow. Yeah. So to mind you, something, we went back. Obviously, first off, that's life changing money. Of course. Absolutely. But it's also scary money to like someone who's homeless like that. They might create a worse situation yeah. than what you found them in. So sure. now we're setting these like individuals up with like financial literacy programs and okay. financial advisors. Cool. So paid off his car, paid off his credit card debt, got him an apartment for a year. He's got seven different jobs lined up. The son's got all his medical bills taken care of. And literally like 
pivoting his life direction in a completely different way. And it just is beautiful, man. Yeah. Um, Dude, how do you, how do you feel after that? Like, you know what I mean? Like what, what goes through your mind? You know, when, you know, when you go to sleep, you lay down there and you're just thinking, right? You're when just I, thinking. When like, I what's post a video, I'm on like, I, like, so I edit the video with my editor. Sometimes I'll be like at the gym. I'm like, please just like, let's raise him a couple thousand dollars. I feel in these situations. I'm like, I hope that the community gets behind this. Yeah. Never once have people let me down. It's true. Every time the GoFundMe is always surpassed what I believe they're going to surpass. Like people want to do good. Yeah. I'm not doing good. I'm, I'm showcasing like someone. And then I'm also like connecting them to like really kind people. I'm just the middleman. I catalyze yeah. it. Mm -hmm. But like every time it works. So I've learned that people want to do good. Sometimes they just don't know where to start. Yeah. How? They don't know how to do it. You right. kind of give them the door to initiate it. And then exactly. they take the rein and it just, it's unreal. And you kind of even added in that that structure of financial literacy as well, right? Because you yeah. weren't really doing that before, I guess. Not at all. Did, was there a, a something that happened where maybe someone mm -hmm. got a lot of money and then yeah, it blew or something uh, like that where you're like, okay. Yeah, yeah. There, there was one or two situations when I first started where we gave like larger lump sums of money. Mind you, not that much, like 10, 10 grand. Yeah. But they were in a worse situation. They, they relapsed and they were back on the street. And you're just like, I fucked up. Like, that's yeah. my fault. Um, but I learned from it and then yeah. now we're putting things in, in, uh, in order and it's not just me anymore. I have a team, which makes things a lot easier as you True. guys know, you're not of a course. one man band, but yeah. How does that, Damn. how did that work? You, you say you build a team. Yeah. Who's on your team? Yeah. What exactly do they do? I want to break that down a little sure. bit. Cause we actually, it's funny. We were driving here and we we're talking about you cause your videos are just popping up Damn. and we're just like, what a beauty. And then we knew you're coming, whatever. Yeah. And then we were actually talking about, I go like, I wonder how hit like the business side of what he's doing and, the, mm -hmm. and like from a structural standpoint, how that's grown yeah. from the last time that we sat down with yeah. you. Um, so the, I work with a team, it's called One Fluent. They're like an agency based out of Calgary. Cool. But essentially they help me with the day to day. So now we're in the process of having a full long, like a merch line, the long form YouTube videos. Let's go. Um, someone who's gonna be working with directly with the financial advisors with each story because like I'm doing like one or two of these a week now, yeah. ideally. So I, you can't keep up with it. So I have some, but I can on the over, overarching, I'm there. Okay. Um, and just net, uh, networking. There's a person who helps me with like networking. So it's not just like, for example, we're doing a video tomorrow with Kevin Hart. Sick. But I'm not connected to Kevin. I just know somebody who's really friends with Kevin's manager. Yes. Cool. And then that's how it happens, right? It doesn't happen. You don't yeah. just plug to the person. Of course. It'd be nice if you could, but usually they're just... But now you're about to know Kevin. Not to know Kevin. Shout <laughs> you're you're going to know him now. Manifestation. Of so, course. Um, but, but, but you do a great job of that, I feel like, yeah. too. I feel like... Every, anything you want, anyone you want to get connected to now, obviously, it's crazy, man. Social, you just put on your story because it's not about me. It's yeah. your message, man. True. People want to get behind, like, oh, I love the good he does. Like, if I could be of any help to do good, yeah. ne I've always shined the light on somebody else, whether it's through the POV style of the content, yeah. whether it's about the GoFundMe's, whether it's about the experience. It's never about like how I can enjoy it. So people get behind that more. But then, yeah. but then, isn't that crazy now going back to what I was saying earlier where people we're recognizing you, no shirt yes, saying who you are, yeah. no merch, no nothing. So it's like, you're shining the light on all these other people and these moments and giving back, but they still recognize yeah, no. you, right? Yeah, it's crazy to me. And that's just, I think that's just a testament to A, who you are and what you stand for. Yeah, right. And the it's, consistency behind it. Too. Well, the consistency is just insane. One to two videos a week, doing what you're doing, and, you're, and you're doing one to two a week, and you're that, that's like different cities different sometimes. Cities, different cities, different experience. Yeah, you got you guys get it with the travel and, and, and creating these things isn't just easy. Like I said, no. like connecting with the coach and the Lakers and all that. Yeah, mind you, there I I put up a story like a week before okay. to try to get connected to LeBron. I couldn't connect to LeBron, but someone who works at crypto, somebody whose best friend was friends with like the daughter of one of the owners yeah, and just crazy. like all these connections. And then finally one of them plug in and work. Yeah. And then you're like, bang, but like yeah. it's a lot of behind the scenes work. I know. Yeah. And I, I've, I've seen like, even since our last episode, you've been working and collaborating with like massive, massive brands, yeah. huge sports teams. Yeah. So you're seeing a lot more of that now. Yeah. It's beautiful. And I love creating the experiences more so than giving like 500,000 bucks. Cause those yes. experiences, like the Super Bowl or the M like uh, NBA finals or meeting your favorite player or artist, those are like life memories like i'll be in like you know like when you go into like the sauna at, at the gym yeah. and you see those old guys and they're talking about like back in my boat <laughs> yeah. i'll be telling those stories like yeah. i remember that one day we met this detroit traffic control officer yeah. and gave her 50 grand in two days because of her energy like yeah. it's mind-boggling to think some of these stories that of i've course. heard and seen and yeah. and as you uh, do notice i guess as your as your numbers and, and your followers increase do you notice that that in turn relates to the amount of money that you're, absolutely of course right absolutely that's that like so yeah. if you can give like an average let's say compared to when we first had you on yeah like 10 to 20 grand for a gofundme and, and now, now and, and, and now 50 to like 200 
150, 240. Yeah. And are, do you notice that people that there's like, you have loyal, f- I guess, followers Fo- that always donate? I know there is. Yeah. But there's like thousands of donators. Right, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously. yeah but there is. And, and it's cool. Just like, yeah. Yeah, there is. Yeah. And, and you'll start to notice that, that, that loyal community too when you have the merch too and when you start doing these yes. things. But even from, I want to say, from like a donation perspective and, and then, you know, bridging that back to the business, like, do you ever have, do you have big brands coming to you and saying, hey, like, we'll, we'll throw 50000 into that or we'll throw 100000 into this, this, this give back? Like, has, yeah. has it in turn come to that or is, or is the brand stuff still more just about the experience? That's where it's turning to, okay. or not turning to, but opening up to. Okay. That's currently, like, the process that we're trying to figure out with, like, when I'm doing stuff with A-listers. Yes. Whether it's a Kevin Hart, whether it's hopefully a Drake very soon. Yes. Um, just found out Kim K shot the follow. On Come on. Let's go. Try to do something with the Kardashians. That's massive. Let's go. That's yeah. massive. But, like, something of that level to get brands behind. Of course. That wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Doing good and with Damn, the biggest bro. in the world. Yeah, that's what I would imagine, right? Because you see, like guys like Mr. Beast, where it's like you know Walmart's giving them a million yep. dollars and he's giving it back, or Home Depot, or these massive brands. Mm-hmm. So I could only imagine that that's pretty much the direction that you're going in. I don't. I never had an issue selling like myself because uh-huh. it's. Um, but it just happens so fast that yeah. I feel like it needs to. Like Mr. Beast's been doing this for what seven, eight years. Yeah, yeah. We've been doing this for like a little under two years. I just feel like. It's there, but I just uh-huh. gotta. Is that how long it's been? Yeah, a little under two years. Oh my <laughs> That's God, insane. Bro. It feels like you've been doing it forever. I know. <laughs> just because you're just beat it to my drum. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, I feel like there's a lot of people too that watch your stuff and and they look at you and they say maybe this is something I want to do with my life as yep. well, right? But I guess to make it into a career, you also need to monetize somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. So as a business, how are you how are you doing that without you know being distasteful to yeah. you know it's, raising money to people? It's a very fine line. Right? Yeah. Uh, so I was delusional at first, to be honest with you. Yeah. I don't know if I ever really explained in the last podcast, like how it actually like really manifested from where I'm started to where I'm at. So like I used to do like, you probably saw those blindfolded hugging videos yes. outside yes. my mall when I quit medical school because I was depressed. But the transitionary point from blindfolded hugs to quarter of a million dollar GoFundMes was just like on an Instagram live one day. And then someone's like, oh, we love your content. Like, I want to give you a hundred bucks. I'm like, you want to give me a hundred bucks? Like, why do you want to give me your money? <laughs> yeah. They're like, no, I love how you make people feel. I'd love for you to like give the money to a stranger because if you feel good, I was like anxious. I was like, okay, sure. So like, that's how money first incorporated. So I put a hundred dollars and gave it away. Yeah. It went really well. Then people started donating Then okay. companies and brands started to get behind it. And then YouTube started getting behind it, but there was never a plan. Yeah. yeah. They were, like I was delusionally confident. Like I remember like I would sit outside like my, so like in Windsor, there's like this nightclub and Saturday night, I pretend not pretended, but like I was acting as a social experiment to be someone who was homeless. And before I went there, like it was like 11 PM at night. I was in like a Burger King parking lot with my friend from high school. I'm like, I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to, I'm going to do give backs. I want to do, I'm going to, I'm going to do this, 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 this. And he thought I was fucking crazy. Of course, <laughs> of course. But in my mind, I'm like, it's already done. Yeah. And then I saw him about a year and a half, some a month ago at the gym. I was like, "Do you remember that conversation outside of Burger King?" He's like, "I do, bro. You were fucking. It was crazy. <laughs> I was being nice to you and like smiling, but like you did it. Yeah. And like you have to have almost this like delusional confidence that you believe in whatever the mission is. I don't know the end game. So like the business aspect is all worked out, but it never worked out because I was like, "How am I gonna make money?" Yeah. yeah. It was how could I not feel depressed and how could I make other people not feel the same? And I hope that people fuck with it. Yeah. yeah. And it goes kind of both ways. And I read a quote too that you to do something for the first time, which you kind of paved the way for this. Yeah, you have to be delusional. Look this right when I quit med school. I'm gonna read it out. Yes, sir. It's a long one, but go for okay. it. Okay, it's not a life decision. It's what's best for me right now. Decision. Australia is in lockdown another six months minimum. I haven't been able to create in over two months because of hard lockdown. I want to reconnect with family and friends back home. I haven't seen in two years. Create a whole new fucking level. Give back to old jobs, schools, community, and then make my next step. Whether Miami, LA, Australia, Bali, wherever. I'm going to make this happen and be a a million subs on YouTube before June 2022. August 19, 2021. Look at the time. Look at the time. 12.39 a.m. Late night. Yes, sir. Late night. night. I've done nothing at that stage, but to write that down. Wow. Damn. Yeah. Now I got goosebumps. <laughs> now you really gave me wow. goosebumps. That's manifestation. So maybe on maybe level. talk about yeah. the power of of, of manifesting and mm-hmm. and how much it's helped you. We talk about it a lot. We try to preach it. Put put what you want out there. Put who you want to be out there and start living yeah. it now. 
right? So maybe walk us through your experience with, with manifesting it and being your future self now. So I think manifestation, delusional confidence, and consistent action are the biggest things. Yeah. But before you can manifest, you have to rid yourself of the care, thought of what others potentially perceive or think of you. Yeah. And for 28 years up to that point, I cared what people thought of me so much. I let it direct me in my life. And at that stage when I was so reformatted in terms of being a blank slate and having nothing really going for me, yeah. I finally didn't care. And once I freed myself of that and felt what was right in my heart of like, okay, I want to help people feel not alone and connect with strangers and make them not feel like I did with the mental health stuff. Yes. Then it just became fucking easy mm -hmm. because I was on my right path. Yeah. We're all here to serve. True. Everyone has a different version of that. Yeah. Yeah at each stage of their life. And at 29, it's through TikTok videos for me. But yeah. but you you find that, like I said, through not caring what people think about you yeah. and finding that intuition. And that's way easier said than done. And, and I think I think the cool part is, and we mentioned like, you know, you said you've been doing this for a little under two years and it feels like forever. I think the reason for that is because of how consistent you've been. It's yeah. just the content doesn't fucking stop. <laughs> it just keeps Thanks, going. Man. Well, just know? think about it. That's how many people there are out there that you need to help. That is just to get it's back. unlimited. Yeah. Yeah. Which is beautiful, right? And then, you know, bridging that is obviously you need to be consistent, but to be consistent means you got to keep working, yeah. right? And, and working for you means creating this content, now building your backend team to try and help you continue to do this. Yes. But also it's travel. It's so not being with your family, not yes. being with your girlfriend, potentially, yes. at, you know, in important moments. You got to yes. miss those moments sometimes. So I want to ask you kind of, A, how are you feeling? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. truthfully, man to man. And Absolutely. I want to know kind of what you've been doing to just keep yourself and your, he your head right yeah. while you do all this. Because it's not easy. At, at the end of the day, it, to people, it looks like it's just videos and just filming this quick video. But it's so much more than that. It's all mentally right? tiring sometimes. I appreciate though. that. Yeah. yeah, I'm good right now. <laughs> um, Amazing. I feel very blessed and I feel thankful. Like, yeah, obviously I have those days where I'm down or I'm tired or miss people or want to do certain things when I'm doing other things like anyone else. But I, I couldn't be more grateful for the situation I'm in and mm. feel very blessed. Um, and more importantly, I have a, a partner and a family and friends who support and align with what I'm doing yes. prior to working. Which like, is, which when is I went, huge. That message was to my mom and dad that I, I wrote in my notes before I texted to my parents because I was super anxious at that time and didn't really know how they were going to take things. But I copied and pasted that note to my mom and dad and they supported me even though I'm like, mom, like, what the fuck? Like, why would you, you think that was a smart, like I was yeah. delusional yeah. in the sense, but they're like, we just wanted to see you happy and felt like that was like the right thing for you at the time. Damn. So to have the right people uh, mm. supporting me and I make time for myself. I still mm. do the things I love. Yeah. yeah I, was, I wanted to ask about that. Anything the like experience is like, like, bro, like the, going to the Lakers game, I'm sitting there courtside talking to the coach about who's better Kobe or LeBron. And I was the biggest <laughs> Kobe fan growing up. Yeah. yeah. I'm happy for Donald and Joseph, but I'm still enjoying the experience. <laughs> right so, yeah, so I feel very blessed. Like it, it synergizes very well with what I love. Cool. Um, doing a crazy experiences and making people's day. Like that makes me feel fulfilled. Yeah. yeah. You, Obviously you, there's a lot of work that goes behind it. Yeah. But yeah. And then there's that moment love. where you're sitting there like, damn, I'm courtside at a Lakers game. Yeah. Or I'm like 10th row at the Super Bowl. Yeah. And like just crazy stuff. And man. being, and being, you know, a kid from Windsor, Ontario. Yeah. Like I, I kind of want to touch on that a little bit because it's not like you came from the big city, Toronto or, or Montreal or Vancouver, no New York, no LA. So, being where you are now, you know, obviously, you know, you can attest a lot of things to that. But if you could kind of narrow it in on one or two things, uh, again, being from that small town, like, what do you think it was that kind of gave you that push? Give me the push. I don't know if anything had to do with the city. I feel like people overemphasize, like, the big city these days. True. Because you know? I think people are people at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, I was actually scared in Windsor to do it because of yeah, it's more of a small-minded mindset. Mm. Um, so I was concerned that what do you think you're doing going outside the bubble? What do you think like that? Yeah. But I just had so much love and support, man, from like every like walk of life, age. Yeah. Like the coolest thing you said about when people come up to me, like in Windsor or anywhere, it could be an eight year old kid or an eighty year old, it could be black, it could be white, it could be Asian, Indian. Like everyone and anyone come up to me with the videos. So the fact that it impacts people everywhere not yeah. even my language or and just it's it's mind-boggling to me man so yeah has there ever been and, and i could never imagine that there was but has there ever been any hate towards course, what you've done of course man really why, why not why? You're more at the beginning wow, than now okay. no, no i need to, I need to now, understand that not as much now of course but still still for yeah, sure yeah. why are you showcasing like you doing like making people happy like you doing good <laughs> that goes back to what we said Crazy. before i think in the last pod with yeah. like 
when people are like, if I'm going to prank you or I'm a fight, or I'm a girl twerking, like, no one's got a problem following, like, and sharing of that. Of course. Mm. Oh, you're doing good. Like, oh, why are you doing good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, do you mean? what the fuck? Why are you doing good? <laughs> so my, my one of my bigger missions, too, with social media was to change the way, I guess, that outlook is. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's fully changed. Um, because you also still have to be delicate and authentic with how you create the content. Of course, of course. But I've noticed since the last time even we chatted, a lot of other creators have started creating similar style of content, yeah. whether that style or in their own niches, yeah. Yeah. to create more purposeful content. And are you happy about that? Like, more yeah, people following your yeah, footsteps? man, I was yeah. blessed, man. I'm yeah. people are like, oh, you must be pissed. He's like copying your shit. I'm like, no, like do the more. more. The merrier, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, you can never do enough good. The whole point is to create a ripple effect of good, whether it's in them creation or just people watching it on the bus yeah. and then going and doing the thing yeah. in their own life. And even for for your brand, MD Motivator, do you ever see it kind of being? bigger than just you in a, in a sense where there could be multiple Zacks yeah. doing it under the MD Motivator brand. Go pro POV most of it. For sure, go <laughs> yeah. for it. Yeah. And and, and the, I've learned like the thousand bucks is great, but the small act that people can make in their own lives is way more meaningful. Mm. Yeah. That little gesture means more. So everyone has that power. Yeah. And it's more powerful to do it like that. Is there is there like a long-term business vision for, for, what, for what you're doing? Um, I know you mentioned like mm-hmm. merch, um, maybe speaking events. I don't know. Is yeah, there anything so, that we can expect or, yeah, so, or at least that you're working towards? Yeah. So there's the merch. We have the long form content coming up, doing a lot of speaking, uh, starting a nonprofit. Um, but I essentially want to like, I guess, brand myself as Mr. Beast, but more wholesome. Mm. Sick. Yeah. People mm. are like, you want to collab with Mr. Beast? I'm like, sure. But like, I'm, I'm creating my own thing right now. Um, or like the Drake thing. Like we've been trying to figure this out for a while. But like it hasn't like come to fruition. But I'm not forcing it. I'm not like, yeah. oh, I can't wait till Drake does the video. Like I'll be very blessed and grateful. But like, I'm building my own thing, and if it attracts at the right time and it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Yeah, fair. Force nothing and just keep yeah. going on your direction, and the right things come. Yeah, well, you're in it for the long run too. You're not going anywhere. So. Not at all, man. <laughs> you know, same with you guys. Yeah. Of course, right? It's like us with guests too. Like we want some guests, but we know that we're not going to stop podcasting yeah. anytime soon, right? So it could be now, a couple of years, we'll It'll make happen. it happen. Yes, sir. Yeah. I feel like I feel like I know we kind of said there's a there's a there's a timeline like off the pod. We we're saying there's yep. sort of a timeline mm-hmm. you got to take advantage. But now I'm kind of rethinking that. And I don't know. For you, I don't think there is a timeline. Because, again, I think what you're doing is timeless. And these yeah. videos, you know, will, will be relevant in 10 years from now, 50 years from now. I think when you have grandchildren, mm, they can look back cool. at this and be like, oh, my God. Like, wow. Yeah. Like, my grandfather did that. My great grand. Like, that's and it's, the beauty of it's what It's cool, doing. too, because there's, like, a tangible piece that's, like, yes. permanent. Like, like, an artist with a song, right? Like, yeah. you, to live forever. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the legacy beautiful. aspect of it. That's pretty fucking it's crazy. crazy. Yeah, like yeah, that. it's amazing. Legacy. That's what you're. That's what you're building right now. Legacy. Mm, yeah, and that's why I asked you. Like, do you see it growing to the point where it's like, yeah, maybe you're doing give, give backs, but like you have another team of ten people under yeah. you all giving back at the same time. Yeah, could no, you see that? I could. Yeah, but yeah. like, it, like I said, it's happened so fast. Like people are like, oh man, like I love you. I'm just, I'm just like. I was making videos, man. I'm just yeah. trying to like go to the next sports team or create the next great experience. Of like, course, yeah. it just happens so fast. I'm not really. Th- I don't think of it like. Um, is there anybody that you haven't worked with that you'd like to work with? Anybody who I haven't worked with that I'd like to work with? Like I said, Drake's pilot. Kobe was the top of my list. Uh, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah. yeah for um, real. You know who Dan Flashman is? Yeah. You you, so yeah. you told me you were meeting up with him, right? So, yeah. so we connected last night. Yeah. And he, did, he has a Guinness World Record for like the largest toy drive. Wow. Um, okay. And he's oh, lost a lot of givebacks. Wow. Getting in that same circle of conversation just like it's really beautiful but in terms of people i want to connect with it's not even like i don't know it's probably on the podcast the drake or the kevin hearts it's it's the donald and josephs yeah mm-hmm. it's the it's the stories it's the edges the girl for the tigers there's i don't know if you if you saw both videos yeah, yeah, 50 grand for them with the tigers um but just people in those jobs that love their job because they love people and they go unrecognized or unappreciated there's always someone who's going above and beyond who just deserves their moment yeah. yeah and if i can use my platform to showcase that and get people behind that and do that they'll never not feel True. the way it felt last week or yeah. a few days ago so For sure and i'm yeah. sure a lot of people also wonder like okay how does how does zach choose who he's gonna help next how does oh. he how does he what's <laughs> how does he know what city he's it's going easy. to yeah it's easy in terms of choosing okay. so i just look for goat energy that's the yeah. word goat yeah. energy <laughs> so you ever talk to someone after you speak to them you're like really smiling yeah and happy? yeah that's the person i'm looking for yeah mm-hmm. they don't need to be down or no they just need to have really good energy true yeah. um so and then in terms of like the cities i guess you're just you oh. just choosing different places yeah. Yeah. it's pretty sporadic in terms of or <laughs> opportunities that present themselves into my dms or 
uh, my emails or whatnot, and yeah. then go from there. Yeah, and like, I saw you doing even a lot more like speaking as as well, speaking yeah. at events and stuff like that. So speaking that, at RiseCon. Yeah. It, well, you guys know Vic yep, as well. Of course, that's yep. gonna be a huge one. In June. So is that something you want to do a lot more of? Yeah, get more into the speaking yeah. space too. Whether it's like that or in like the grade school, high school, college level speaking, I do a lot of like. You did some schools, speaking. right? Even on Ontario, right? Yes, sir. Like you were doing a bunch. Yeah, I did some in Toronto. Did some in my hometown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I try, low key, everywhere I go to do one grade school or high school, every city. Okay. Without like recording, just do it. Yeah. It's oh, fun. right on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of stuff like behind the scenes that's not really like shown. Did you ever think about do doing it. anything like outside of the states? For sure, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Like go to like like third world countries, I guess. Like that'd be kind of crazy. I think we're doing that in July. I'm not sure where, but I think that's happening in July. Yeah. Even like Latin America or or even Europe. Would be I, think, I think we're going to Jordan. Wow. wow. Yeah, I think that's a country. I'm not sure. That'd be unbelievable. Don't me. My mind's like... I mean, people we'll pull know, it back. People we'll pull it back <laughs> if it happens, though. People, people are going to recognize you worldwide. Yeah. Which yeah. is crazy. Like yeah, when he, he, have, you, have you been outside of the States and, and noticed that at all? Yeah, when we went to Brazil with Jason Derulo for his thing in Rio, mm -hmm. there was like a crowd outside when I walked out for me. <laughs> I was like, you mean Jason? Jason's I go get Jason for you. But no, it was, it was, for, it was for me. And they were wow. all from like Rio and Brazil knew yeah. who I was. It was crazy. Like that was like the first... That's unbelievable. Crazy moment. Yeah. Yeah. I actually want to click back quickly because you were mentioning about like going to, to, to an event, then Vanessa Bryan would be there. Yeah. And, and kind of what I want to say is, first of all, like you become a master networker, I feel like. Yeah. It's almost like whatever you want, whoever you want to get to, like you get there. Yeah. <laughs> so like, It's pretty fucking crazy. It's You're insane. on a crazy yeah. path it's right insane. now. Yeah. And I kind of want to talk about that. Obviously, you know, not everybody has the, the, the following that you yeah. do. So if someone's, you know, a little bit of advice for anybody who's trying to make a connection, maybe yeah. maybe beyond what they feel like they could, like you know, beyond the level of person they feel like they could get connected with. Yep. What's what's some advice you'd have for them? Um, to connect with the person you want to connect with. Um, I think it goes back to the, like uh, they said in Gary Vee, like it's too repetitive with the authentic word, but living your authentic self, not caring people think and like aligning with your mission, like mm. gun ho whether it sinks or stays up like just to follow your path yeah um i think if you're living that people are attracted to that yeah um you may not connect with that person but you may connect with the in-between person that connects you to that person or that in-between person connects you with somebody else that you didn't know you needed in your life yeah it leads you in a better direction absolutely um yeah i don't i don't know man i feel very just blessed like i was in the car one day with my mom and I was on the phone with, like, the NBA because we're trying to do something with the NBA finals. And the guy from the NBA is like, like, your reputation precedes itself. And, like, I didn't really think of it. I'm like, oh, thank you so much. And I just continued the conversation. My mom's like, the NBA, like, so the reputation precedes it. Like, what the fuck does that make you think? I'm like, huh. Yeah. But, like, I don't even yeah. think. I'm just like, <laughs> of course. all right, we'll create something sick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, gonna get like yeah. Said, it's been under two years, right? So yeah. everything's happening so fast. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I feel like they're not aligning with me. They're aligning with the movement of that course. I'm hoping creates and people all have feelings, right? Yeah. yeah. People are connecting. I, I'd much rather you, like, instead of pulling up, like, my stats of, like, oh, you have 25 million followers. That's yeah. crazy. Like, I watched your one video, and because of that video, it changed my outlook on this. Like, of course. Like, the feeling mm -hmm. it creates versus, obviously, like, the following and the verified check and of all that course. stuff's great. But, like, the feeling is way more powerful, especially when, like, celebrities or anyone, they did, they're human. Yeah. yeah. They're human just like me and you. Fact. So. True. Do you ever feel uh, pressure in terms of your videos, like you do, you do Donald, right? Yeah. And now you're like, fuck, like this one's gotta, I gotta do better the next one. I gotta do even a crazier video, more inspiring story. Do you ever feel that pressure as a creator? Because I know a lot of creators feel it, even us with a podcast, right? I love basketball, so I always related to basketball. So okay. like when Kobe dropped like his career high, what was it, eighty one points? Yep. Yeah. Against the Raptors, Against the Raptors yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think okay, like that. It happens. It happens. No, don't, it don't worry. Happens. Don't worry. Don't <laughs> so let it happen. When he dropped eighty one, you gotta play another game right after, right? True not gonna always have 81 points but you're yeah. gonna have like this portfolio or this average or this legacy like overall so yeah there's highs there's lows there's peaks there's value. true it's just yeah yeah and i want to talk about a little bit about mental health too i know you're sure. a big advocate yes, sir. um and i know that you know last couple of years has been really tough yeah um i know that you're a big preacher of of also male mm -hmm. mental health right which i don't think we get enough of that message um so what do you think of where we are right now in society yeah um and, and what kind of messaging we're, we're giving to young men. Where do you think we're at with that? Do you think we're in a good spot or do you think that we can be better? I think we can be better. Yeah. I think we're in a situation where, like, you can say that and speak on it. Yeah. But still, the action of taking that step to actually do something about it. Yeah. There's that missing step. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I think we can definitely be better. Yeah. I just wish... Uh, 
people had the comfort or the the vulnerable confidence to just say I'm not feeling good or I'm not okay. You don't need to go into depth with it. Yeah. But just saying something yeah. that can really get you out of that hole yeah. faster than you think or Cause you, you, connect you, you with people that maybe are going through the same shit. True. You posted something. Um, 84 men a week take their life. Yes. 75% of suicides are male. Yes, sir. That's, That's so sad. Three and four. Suicide. It's a crazy three, stat. Three and four. And is Why it, do you guys think that? <sighs> I mean, l- like I said, I think that there's there's not the proper guidance for young men in today's society. I don't think that they, they have enough figures like yourself to look up to. Um, I don't think that, you know, even with mainstream media, I, I, I don't think that they put men, young men in a position to win anymore to the extreme or to, to fulfill their full potential. Yep. They kind of limit. The, the men in my in my opinion but right but i also think the from the conversation aspect of yeah. it mm. like like you mentioned like i feel like young young men who are feeling you know having these feelings they don't know who to talk to that's mm-hmm. also true right um it's not clear because it's you don't you know you're scared to go to your friends because you don't want to look like oh i'm this i'm that and then it's like do you go to your family well then you know you know if you were to talk to your dad about it i feel like a lot of it might be well i don't want to disappoint him that i'm weak yeah so but then you tell your mom and she doesn't fully understand because she's not a man yeah i feel like it's tough and and i guess that's kind of like what i wanted to ask you what your thoughts were on it in terms of if if there is any young men listening to this who are struggling mm-hmm. to some extent that maybe don't feel like they have a friend necessarily that they can talk to or maybe they don't feel like their family's going to understand yep who who do they turn to or what, what's your recommendation on a that stranger yeah so like when i was really depressed and like questioning life i was in sydney and i was i don't share the story i don't know if i shared with you last time but like you know the opera houses yeah okay i went for like a late night walk around the opera house and when I did that, I remember just like, that was my lowest. It was like middle of the night, like 1130. I just sat there on like the wall, on the ground, a little wet ground because it was just raining, the cement, brick, whatever it was, ground, and just crying, just like stared crying and just feeling like really no one to turn to and like, I don't want to know what I want to do with my life. Like, I'm so lost. Yeah. And these two females, I guess they're in their mid thirties, they saw me and they just came up. They're like, are you okay? I'm like. Yeah, I'm fine. Like, <laughs> clearly not fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're like, oh, they're like, it's okay. Um, they're like, we really got nothing going on. You wanna like, you wanna like talk? I'm like, no, I'm okay. It's okay. And then they just, they ended up sitting on the wet ground next to me wow. yeah. for like 30 minutes, and we spoke. And that was the first moment before I told my parents how I was feeling. Um, once I let it out to them. I've never seen them again. I don't have their number. I don't know how they're doing. I'm just very grateful for them. Thank like angels. For them. Yeah. Hey, fucking angels. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we spoke and about this with, with uh, sorry, go on. Nah, I just, yeah. it was just, that was like, that was the, that was really the life changing moment for of me. Of course. Um, so sometimes you don't need your best friend to understand. You just need someone, someone. to listen to you yeah. and yeah. tell you it's okay to just let it out. Yeah. And once you do that, it comes easier. So, just like sort of letting it out the first time and just getting those feelings out. Yeah, and there was no judgment because they're strangers. I don't know them, right? Mm. I'm not the perceived thoughts of like, oh, I thought you're doing this or you're like this, and yeah. Yeah. they know me as this version of me, and yeah. they yeah. didn't know me from a whole. I was just this kid crying, a guy crying on the yeah. corner. Yeah, and, and we had, we had this chat with with Caesar Milan yesterday. He was saying that he believes in you know a higher power, an inner voice. Yep. He had a bunch of angels on his on his path. Do you believe that you you were put here for this purpose? Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like, like I said before, I was easy, but like I just feel like I'm living my my version of me. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 for anybody that's listening, that's trying to find their purpose, because I I feel that that is a big reason for mental health issues yes. in today's day. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you have social media. You're seeing everybody, whether it's real or not, living their best life. They know yep. what they want to do. Um, so a lot of people struggle with not knowing what their purpose is, yep. right? And we're, so we're expected to have it, like, come out of high school, 18 years old, and you're supposed to know everything you want in life. 14 or 15, so you yeah. take the right classes. Yeah, yeah, yeah there school. you go. Exactly. exactly. And, Prerequisites. Get and everything I feel like done. that's kind of the biggest <laughs> thing. So I want to ask you now, being someone who has found their purpose... 
what do you recommend for somebody who ha maybe hasn't found theirs yet? H how can they take the right steps to try and find it? Try as many things as you possibly can yeah. to eliminate everything you don't like and you'll be left with what you do like. Yeah. Mm. That was the biggest thing. This yeah. whole like co-op and volunteering, like call up this, volunteer this, try this, go with this, do that, do that. Just so you can check off, nope, nope, nope. And you'll be stuck with the one. The one. So you you never, never go for one and then put all your eggs in one basket and be yeah. like, oh. True. It didn't work. I guess my life's not gonna work out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna but be stuck in this job or this relationship or this life. But that's, that's kind of what me. happens. You, yes, it does, and that's uh -huh. why there's road rage. That's why there's, <laughs> that's why there's all this shit. Yeah. yeah, it's because we just don't live the versions of ourselves and, that we can. And 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 I kind of like I, I totally agree with what you're saying. We always say try as many things yeah. as possible. That's what we did. We yeah. and that's what we did, right? And that's kind of how we got here. But I think also then there's a misconception of like, oh well. I'm 35 now. I've already had the same job for 10 years or I'm mm -hmm. 40 now. And, 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 you know, Gary Vee talks about it a lot. <laughs> yeah. He says 50 is halftime. Yeah. Yes, like sir. 50 years old <laughs> is just that. halftime. <laughs> That's right? amazing. Yeah. So, so I'm curious, like, what's your thoughts on that in terms of like, you know, somebody, cause I'm sure you have a ton of these kind of conversations. Yeah. You know, I'm 45 years old. I'm 50 years old. I'm 55 years old. Yeah. And I, I don't, I hate what I'm doing. I'm yep. not in the place I want to be. What's your advice to those people? Yeah. Look, I, living example that I was like 28 in med school with hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt and there's no really plan B. Yeah, no Everything exercise. I've done for the last seven, eight years is to get this path. Like, how do you get out of it? Uh, I get it. You guys know Samuel L. Jackson story? No. No. So Samuel L. Jackson didn't start acting until he was in his 40s. Wow. Really? You know that? What? Wow. Didn't start acting. Not like popped off. Didn't start acting until he was in his 40s. Oh my God. And he is, wow. out of all the actors and actresses, He's been in the most highest grossing films of anyone in human yeah, history. Yeah, that's yeah top, he's, he's got to be top three, three for, for sure. sure. He never started till he was in his 40s. Wow. And, and do you know why he start, like why he ended up starting? Do you I, know? I don't know enough back. I just heard okay. that and I was, just, I was just blown away. And it's just like, if you, it's a there's, there's so many stories like that of just when you find it, it like life becomes easy, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. But it doesn't mean make the most money or the highest grossing, but most successful. Whatever su success is different depending on what your, your of aim course, is, right? Of course. Um, my biggest piece of advice for someone feeling stuck. Whew, I don't know. That's a really tough question. Uh -huh. What would you guys say? I mean, I would say you have to kind of look inward as okay. well. Um, as much as talking to people, you have to understand where you're at in life, what you want yep. in life. And you, I think a big piece is what you said. You have to stop caring about what other people will think. Right. Yeah. And I think that's something where someone who's 35, 40 years old, maybe to leave their job and, and to start a side business or to start that's they're going to be judged yeah and maybe at that age they've already been used to not being judged because they've been settling into the mm -hmm. the, the whole world of comfort right yeah. Yeah. so yeah i would i would say look inward and and you have to really just put yourself in a position to not care what people think about you and 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 you're going to get judged and i think i think even to add to that there's actually a little bit and this is just my opinion a little bit of ego because I think you got to like, you know, you're 40 or 50 and you want to change your whole life direction. You sort of got to remove your ego because in your head, you're thinking, oh, all these people are going to care about what I do. At the end of the day, no one gives a fuck. Like, that's the reality of it. Everyone has their own lives to worry about, yeah. their own problems to figure out. So the fact that you're blocking yourself from trying something that could make you 100 times happier because you're worried about what other people may think is like they and not, not just a hundred time. times happier, but maybe may create more good in the world and change yeah. exactly. people's lives that exactly. you never would be able to touch or create otherwise. Yeah, Correct. and I think people have to realize when you get to a certain age, you can be 65, 70 years old. No one's going to feel bad that you didn't do nope. what you wanted to do. Exactly. No one's going to care. No one cares. Yeah. Right? So it's Nobody like, cares. do you really want to be in that position where it's like, I should have just done it. Yeah. The last people judge me want, anyways. The last thing you want is to be on your deathbed with regrets. Yes. That is the like, absolute last thing you want. Right? I think that's something that, that really sticks with me too. Like just like thinking about the future and not wanting to have any regrets. I think that's something that if people took as well, right? Like Absolutely. if you put yourself in the future and say, okay, well, let's say I am 65. What am I going to be thinking about my, my life? Mm -hmm. Right? Um, so yeah, not wanting to have any regrets. I think waking up one day when you're 65 and, and thinking about all the things you didn't do, that's that must be such a bad feeling. You know, and I don't want to feel that. I don't think people. No one feel has that. to feel that way. No one has to yeah. feel that way. Yeah. Right. So I think the sooner they make that that jump into finding their purpose mm -hmm. and going with it. Um, and I think guys like you have changed the game for that, honestly. And, and, and you've brought good to social media, which I think that. Thank you, man. It, it needed, needed for yes. so long. You know, these last, I'd say between five and 10 years of social media have been very 
I want to say fake in a way people wh whether that was fake love or just people pretending they were happy or pretending mm, they were in a certain position yeah. that maybe they weren't um and you I feel like you've done a great job and, and bro you're changing the world man you brought like you brought love you brought you made oh, you man. made being kind cool like yeah, mission, how man. fucking amazing is that it's how does that feel a, bro it's unreal man it, I feel so blessed and like I always still try to share like the story of like, my my Instagram story like I don't care how big it grows or how much money you raise guy who was depressed in med school wanted yes. to find a friend and yeah. like this is my story like i want to share that so people know that it's not like this like it must be nice yeah. I, I like that you i was gonna say you've you've like you kept that consistent you'll always go back to the story and give people the story there's always new people yes exactly so Amazing. i just want to make sure that they know and they're aware of why what empty motivator means well, that's yeah. what we got to do this part every year right once a year <laughs> every 10 months <laughs> i keep it rolling. i'd love to man so no, 50s even, half time even that's talking it. about ego i think a lot of people have trouble with that right you dropped your ego you said i'm about to go out there put a blindfold on yeah that's dropping your ego like I dropped an ego, but I also became, I said, I don't care. People think, I think I became numb to the thoughts or feelings of others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like if you're that 35 year old or 45 year old who just is not happy or hates their situation, use that like almost as like a numbing, um, True. to go after what you really truly feel like you deserve. Nice. Um, maybe you still do care, but like allow yourself to numb it. Like I would much rather go after something I really want to do and be concerned about worrying about like, the thoughts of others versus going back to the job and feeling those feelings that i know yeah are internal and deep and just yeah, yeah. no yeah. we we actually you know it's funny you say that the numbing thing we had a uh, sophia franklin mm. uh, who's one of the co-hosts of call her daddy yep and uh she said that we asked her like how did you deal with all the hate you got after um you know you had that breakup situation and she's like listen i don't know if it was the healthiest way to do it She's like, but I just numbed everything out yep. and kept like moving forward in a direction that I knew like I wanted to go in. That's exactly it. Yeah. Which can be tough for some people, right? Very. But when you've gone through so much and it just, you finally hit that point where it's just like enough's enough. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, everyone's got a different point. Yeah. But Facts. Yeah. yeah. If you're listening right now, you could do anything. Like yeah. and that's the most cliche, but most true thing. Like it's true. You could do anything in the time you have and. Hundred percent of it, and go for it. And on a personal level, now, like what, you're in a relationship right now. Yes, sir. Nice. So, yeah. is is your plan to have a family? Oh have wow, kids. Going there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We gotta <laughs> go there. Come on, we gotta talk about you, man. Yeah, man. I want a family. I want yeah. a few kids. Yeah. I want. Yeah. I want a life. I want to create little babies. Yeah, and yeah. why why I'm asking you this because like I want to know now seeing all these sort of things like male mental health I, and and I want to show you one more thing. Of course, just to show you about the idea of living your truth and how yeah. that plays. I'll plug this to you too. It's sort of like the thing. This is this is the first time I've ever met my partner. Click that top one, top left corner. This is the first time I ever met her. We're talking about people's dreams. Yeah. What's your dream? My dream is to be in Nakai Dennis one day. And is that what you're doing right now? Yeah, I'm in Nakai Dennis. Amazing. Yeah, and I also want to grow my business. I have a shampoo and skincare business. And oh, really? Hopefully, I'm packed by doing that. That's how I met my partner. Wow. Started doing what I wanted to start doing, and we connected. Through okay, and when you first wow. connected, did you feel yeah, the first time? Did you feel four K? That's story. crazy, wow. right? Like that's something you could show your kids yeah. though, too, right? That's crazy. And did you yeah, did you crazy. feel did you feel a connection with her from that one right video away. right yeah. away? Yeah, yeah, right away. I knew right away. I can see in the voice. The voice changed a little bit. No, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the same swagger. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now I guess being through what you've been through. Yeah. Right, and then eventually having children. Mm -hmm. What kind of what kind of values are you trying to are you going to be trying to instill in them in this crazy world that we live in? To love yourself, to be comfortable in your own skin, yeah, and to pursue happiness and purpose, and let them try as many things and as many things as they want, and to always be kind to others, yeah. and to showcase that not through speaking but through my and her actions. Mm. That's and the big one. Always right actions. That's talking the big is one. so overrated. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. and there's, and that's sort of with mental health stuff. There's so much talk about how to normalize it, destigmatize this, but until we actually take action. Yeah, none of those words matter. It's just all these words right now. Yeah, yep. it's nice. You share them on your it's story. Nice. You'll yeah, like it's better than nothing. It's <laughs> better than you'll tag the person. But like, I mean, like, no, let's be talk there. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call, <laughs> call your friend that you haven't spoken to in a while and say how you doing. Like, I was, I was out and I was thinking of you. How's, how's everything been? Yeah, oh, yeah. You thinking? 
Just like the little things. Just that's enough. Right matters, there, man. And then the, the crazy fucking part is you think you're doing something for them. You feel way better yourself. Yeah. Than it's anything. a two way street. It's a two way street. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We need some, uh, some MD motivator juniors yeah. walking around. Let's yeah. go, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the Godfather's brother. <laughs> Sounds good to me, boys. Listen, uh, I <laughs> Get know. Get them on the pod one day. hundred percent. We're going to do more mics. We'll do a final talk. <laughs> Listen, I, I know you got to get head, headed to VCon. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, as do we. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you so much. Oh, giving us the guys. time again. This is just chapter two. Yeah, chapter two. that's it. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll be to chapter three in probably, what, 10 months? Every 10 months we're going to do just this? just keep doing your <laughs> thing, bro. Hopefully we could do something together soon. Absolutely. Do a yes. nice collaboration. Um, And, bro, just so proud of you. Straight yeah, up, man. for real, I'm man. proud to have you as a friend. Proud, proud yes. to see you doing everything you're doing. Um, And you really are someone who practices what they preach. Thank you. I appreciate that. And yeah. I was speaking to my mom yesterday about, she's like, oh, I really like those two guys that we met on the first day of the field. I'm like, yeah, they're awesome. Like, Two guys from Toronto, yeah, doing their thing, believing in themselves, and working hard at it, and making it happen. And it's beautiful to see other guys, or just people, Thanks, doing brother. that, man. So it's super inspiring what you're doing. Appreciate my that, guy. Bro. And following, I'm, I'm with you guys. Yeah, man. <laughs> We're on this journey together, Let's bro. Let's go, yeah, baby. 100%. Guys. We'll stay connected. Love Watch you, buddy. Love. Thank you so much. Guys, if you're here, you made it all the way, and I know you did. You're not subscribed. Hit the subscribe button. Like this video. Let us know what you thought. Yep. We'll drop Zach's, uh, all of his uh, links in the bio. I mean, you probably don't need to. You obviously know you who he is You probably follow him already. Already follow him. <laughs> Love you guys. Thank you so much. And we are out.